All right, welcome to another lab video for advanced chemistry. This time we're looking at a kinetics experiment, the kinetics of a fading dye. And in this experiment, we're gonna use a dye called malachite green. We have a very dilute solution of it here. It's, it looks blue-green to the naked eye. The malachite green, when it reacts with hydroxide ions, will fade. The hydroxide ions react with malachite green and form colorless products. The two reactants there are Mg, malachite green, and hydroxide. So we could write a rate law, a differential rate law. Rate equals a rate constant times the concentration of malachite green to some order x times the concentration of hydroxide to some order y. So in this experiment, we're trying to determine the orders, the x and the y, for the two reactants. And if possible, we'd also like to get the rate constant for the reaction at room temperature. Now, when you have more than one reactant, like we have here, that lends itself to a differential rate law analysis, but it makes a, an integrated rate law analysis a little bit harder. In an integrated rate law lab, you can only have one concentration which is changing over time. So with two reactants in the reaction, we have to play a little bit of a trick. What we're gonna use is a very dilute stock solution of the malachite green. Its concentration in the bottle, what I have in my beaker here, is 11 times 10 to the minus six molarity. Then we're gonna use a very much higher concentration of the other reactant. We're gonna do two trials, so we'll use hydroxide concentration of 0 0.10 molarity in the first trial, and then we'll use 0 0.050 molarity in a second trial. But in both of those trials, the hydroxide concentration is much greater than the concentration of the malachite green. So during the reaction, when the malachite green's color fades to almost zero, it'll become almost colorless in the reaction, the malachite green will drop in concentration while the hydroxide concentration will essentially stay constant. As the malachite green fades, its concentration goes from 11 times 10 to the minus six to almost zero, then the hydroxide concentration will drop by a similar amount, but if you have a 0.1 molar or 0.05 molar hydroxide to begin with, and it drops by 11 times 10 to the minus six molarity, the concentration is essentially constant. So because hydroxide is essentially constant, we can combine its term in the rate law with the rate constant. And we can say that K times the hydroxide concentration, those two things are together a constant. So we'll get a new rate law, we'll call it rate equals K pseudo, so a pseudo or false rate constant, times the concentration of our malachite green to its order X. This new rate law with a pseudo rate constant has only one thing changing concentration, the malachite green. Therefore, we can now analyze this with an integrated rate law approach. But just remember that that pseudo rate constant is a combination of two things. K pseudo is the original rate constant K times the concentration of hydroxide to its order Y. We're gonna do two trials with two different hydroxide concentrations. You'll, so you'll know the hydroxide concentration in both trial one and trial two, and we'll measure K pseudo for those two trials. If you know K pseudo and you know the two concentrations of hydroxide, then you'll be able to determine hydroxide's order and the actual rate constant K as well. So those are the purposes of the lab to determine the order for malachite green by integrated rate law analysis, then to determine K pseudo and the actual order for hydroxide and the actual rate constant for the reaction at room temperature. To begin with, I've got some pipette, some, uh, sorry, some test tubes that are now filled with distilled water. I've put one milliliter of distilled water three milliliters, five, seven, and nine. So you may wanna create your own data table. These five test tubes, again, have one milliliter, three, five, seven, and nine milliliters of distilled water. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna pipette 
some malachite green solution, you already know its concentration, we're going to pipette enough to make 10 milliliters in each test tube. So if this has one milliliter of water, I'm going to add nine milliliters of the malachite green. This guy has three milliliters of water, so I'm going to add seven milliliters of malachite green. When I'm finished, there'll be 10 milliliters in each test tube. Let me do the first, I'll do this one here, which only needs one milliliter of malachite green. I've got a more pipette. This one is a 10 milliliter more pipette. So I'm going to put that in my solution. I'm going to take a pipette bulb, squeeze the air out, and I'm going to slowly release my grip, which will have the malachite green sucked up the pipette. I don't have to fill it completely because I'm only going to use one milliliter. I'm going to lift this up and look at eye level. Right now, the meniscus, well, it's actually very, very close to two milliliters. In fact, it's pretty much right now at two milliliters. So what I'm going to do is just touch that to the side of the beaker. I'm going to grab this, pipe, this test tube, which has nine milliliters of water, and I'm going to add one milliliter of the malachite green. So I'm going to drain the pipette from two milliliters down to three milliliters. I'll just release the pressure on my finger and the level of malachite green will drop. And I'm going to stop when I've added one milliliter. There we go. All right. So now I've added one milliliter of malachite green to this test tube. I'm going to continue by putting three milliliters, five milliliters, seven milliliters, and nine milliliters of malachite green to get 10 mils in each test tube. All right, so I finished my pipetting. I've got now five test tubes of diluted malachite green. And then I poured some malachite green from the stock solution, the 11 times 10 to the minus 6 molarity solution. So there's a sixth test tube. So this one is the most concentrated. It's the darkest color, and it gets lighter colored. My pipetting was a little bit fast in a couple of places, so you may notice that when you look later at the graph you'll make. The reason we've made these solutions, these diluted solutions of malachite green, is to create a Beer's Law plot. We're going to make a graph of the absorbance of these solutions versus concentrations so that you will then have a mathematical relationship between absorbance and concentration for malachite green. Before we can do the Beer's Law plot, though, we need to determine which wavelength of light malachite green absorbs best. We know that it's a blue-green colored solution, so it's not absorbing the blue and green colors very well, but we're going to use a SpectroVis spectrophotometer, and we'll display that here on the iPad to look at the absorption spectrum for malachite green. I've already calibrated the SpectroVis by putting some distilled water in a cuvette. I've inserted that in the SpectroVis and we've calibrated it. All of our solutions are made with distilled water as solvent, so now the spectrophotometer is ignoring the absorbance of the water. I have another cuvette with the malachite green in it, the stock solution, so I'm going to be inserting that in the SpectroVis and we'll see what its absorption spectrum looks like to determine the wavelength of light that it absorbs best. We call that wavelength lambda max, the wavelength of maximum absorbance. All right, so we're ready to record the absorption spectrum of the malachite green solution. I've already got my cuvette filled. I've calibrated the um, SpectroVis already using some distilled water. I'll put the sample into the SpectroVis, and now let's press the collect button to run the full spectrum. So there we go, we'll press stop, and now you can see the absorption spectrum for the malachite green. Because it's a greenish blue colored solution, we notice that the, absorp the absorbance values are very low in the blue-green region of the spectrum, so it's not absorbing those colors, rather it's transmitting it, which is why the solution looked to be blue-green. The wavelength that we're interested, though, is the one that has the highest absorbance value, and you can see here it's marked on the screen for us. 
on the lower right hand side of the screen, it tells us that the wavelength of maximum absorbance is about 616.5 nanometers. So we can use something like 616 nanometers as our lambda max, the wavelength of maximum absorbance for malachite green. That's the wavelength we'll use to run Beer's Law experiments as well as to analyze the kinetics runs. All right, from our absorption spectrum, we saw that 616 nanometers was the wavelength of lambda max, the maximum absorbance. So let's now change our um, wavelength that we're going to use on the, on the um, spectrobiz. I'm going to change the wavelength to 616 nanometers. So rather than shine all possible wavelengths in the visible spectrum through the sample, we're only going to shine this one wavelength. 616 nanometers is being used. So now when I insert a, a, um, a uh, cuvette into the spectroviz, we're going to see the absorbance on the screen here. But before I can do that, I should change the mode of the experiment. We don't want to run a full spectrum test I'll do just a time-based test. We won't actually be collecting those data over time, but that's, that's going to be OK. So we're using a wavelength of 616 nanometers. When I insert a cuvette, inserting it in a direction the light passes through my solution, now the absorbance of the solution is displayed on the screen. So let me discard the distilled water from my cuvette. I'll start with the most dilute solution. I hope you've made a data table for yourself. You recorded the volume of water in each, in each test tube and the volume of the malachite green stock solution. You also recorded the concentration of the stock solution. So now you could do dilution calculations and find the concentration in each test tube. Remember the sixth one was not diluted. The sixth one is the original stock solution. So I'm going to be pouring some of the solution into the cuvette, rinsing it and discarding that down the drain. You could also collect that in a waste beaker if you prefer. I'm going to rinse it two or three times with the solution and then we'll fill it up. So that was my second rinse. I'll do one more rinse, discard that and then one more time fill it up with the solution. If you were using this device, it would be a good idea to cap the solution. There are little plastic caps that you can put on your cuvettes so that you don't spill it into the spectroviz, but I'm pretty confident I can do that. I'm going to make sure there's no air bubbles in the cuvette. I'm looking through there. I don't see air bubbles. If I did, I would flick the cuvette. I've also dried it and wiped off any fingerprints with a Kim wipe tissue. I'll insert the cuvette into the color into the spectroviz, and now you want to record this absorbance value as the absorbance of test tube number one. All right, so let's repeat that. Maybe what I'll do is pause here. I'll, I'll prepare some more cuvettes so we can go through these absorbance values more quickly. All right, so I've cheated a little bit. I've used brand new cuvettes, which means I didn't have to rinse them out ahead of time. So here's my second test tube's absorbance value. You want to observe that and record the absorbance value for test tube number two. We'll take that out. Now the third test tube's absorbance value. Concentrations are getting larger, it's getting more concentrated, so you'll notice the absorbance values are getting larger. The fourth test tube's absorbance value, again, make sure it's dry on the outside. The fifth test tube's absorbance. There we go. And now the sixth test tube, which was actually not diluted. This is the original stock solution. Give it just a moment. There's its absorbance value. 
And again, these absorbances were all measured at 616 nanometers, the wavelength of maximum absorbance. So now you can take the concentrations that you've calculated for each test tube and their absorbance values, and you can make your own Beer's Law plot. You'll graph the absorbances on the y-axis and the concentrations on the x-axis. Then you'll do a linear regression, or you'll find the equation of the straight line that goes through this graph, and you'll have an equation that lets you relate the absorbance values to the concentrations. The next time you measure an absorbance value, you can use that equation to find the concentration of the malachite green in the solution. So what we're going to do next is do the kinetics runs of the experiment. We'll be reacting the malachite green with hydroxide solutions and looking at how the absorbance values change over time. All right, so we're ready to do the kinetics run the first trial. I have here in one beaker some 0.10 molar sodium hydroxide. That's the source of our hydroxide ions. I've measured it out to be 10 milliliters in this graduated cylinder. Over here is our stock solution, the 11 times 10 to the minus 6 molar malachite green, and I've measured 10 milliliters of that also. So we're going to combine those in another beaker and the reaction will start. Before we do the combination, let's change some of the settings on our lab quest. We're going to change the duration of the experiment. Um, let's see, why don't we run it for about five minutes? We'll, we can always stop it if we have to. Five times 60 seconds, that would be 300 seconds, the length of our experiment. And then we don't need to collect data that often, so the rate of um, the, the interval for the collection, if we're running it for five minutes, why don't we collect samples, let's say every 30 seconds. Okay, so 30 seconds per sample, and we'll say done, and okay. So now we're ready to begin. We're gonna mix the two chemicals in the beaker. The reaction will start. I'm gonna then fill the cuvette. We'll put it into the lab quest, or sorry, into the SpectroViz, and we'll start collecting data, and you'll see that on the, on the screen in the video. All right, so I'm now mixing the malachite green with the hydroxide. I'm now filling my cuvette, putting that in the colorimeter, the SpectroViz, and starting to collect the data. We'll discard old data. And now let's see what we get. So the absorbance value is starting. Remember, we've diluted the solution. The mixing of 10 mils of hydroxide with 10 mils of the malachite green causes both concentrations to initially fall by half. I just realized my mask is on, so hopefully you weren't hearing a muffled sound. So we're going to be collecting the absorbance values now every 30 seconds. So we can see the graph, the absorbance is dropping. Let's switch to a data table. All right, so you're, wanna, you're wanting to record the data. So every 30 seconds we're recording the data. We may have to change that interval if this uh, doesn't work out very well. We want to have at least five or six data points. When you're doing an integrated rate law analysis, unlike the differential rate law analysis, it's good to get your sample to go through at least two half-lives. So if we started with an absorbance of around 0.42, after one half-life, we'd be down to an absorbance of about 0.41, or sorry, 0.21. So right now we're at 0.244 at 60 seconds, that's almost a first half-life. We'd like to get through at least two half-lives so that we have, we've gone through about 75% of the original uh, malachite green. So this might actually be okay. To make a graph, we'd like to have five, six, seven data points. We set it to run for 300 seconds. We may not need to go that long. So again, be sure you have your own data table. We're recording these absorbances at lambda max at 616 nanometers.
That's been two minutes so far. I think with one more data point, we'll have gone through two half-lives. So we'll take maybe two more data points and we'll, we'll stop the experiment there. All right, so that's been two and a half minutes with one more data point. Well, it'll be three minutes and we'll stop there. All right, so there's 180 seconds. Let's take a look at the graph from our experiment. So this is a graph of absorbance versus time. Remember that you created, or you will create, a Beer's Law plot. Your Beer's Law plot will give you an equation that will let you convert absorbance values to concentrations. So you'll be able to take the absorbance values here from our data table and convert these all to concentrations of malachite green. Then you can create your own graph of concentration versus time. Because absorbance and concentration are proportional, you can already make draw some conclusions about the order for malachite green. Here we see the absorbance is dropping and it's not a straight line graph. This is absorbance versus time, which would be analogous to concentration versus time. Getting a curve tells us something about the order for malachite green. But if you convert your absorbances to concentrations, that would be better. Then you'll get a graph of concentration versus time, which will actually let you go on to find the rate constants later on. So that worked well for trial one. Let's now repeat this with trial two. So in trial two's kinetics run, we're going to use a concentration of hydroxide that is now half what it was before. So instead of 0.1 molar, we're now using 0 0.050 molar sodium hydroxide. Other than that, it's going to be the same procedure. So I'm going to, I've got 10 mils of the 0 0.050 molar sodium hydroxide and 10 mils of my malachite green, the stock solution. I'm mixing those just like I did in trial one. Now that they're mixed, I'm swirling the beaker. I'm now filling my cuvette. It's a new cuvette, so I don't have to rinse it. I'm drying the cuvette and putting it into the SpectroViz. And now we will collect data for trial two. We'll discard the data from trial one. And we'll again be collecting the absorbance values every 30 seconds. Let's take a look at the data table. So this time the concentration of hydroxide is half as much. The graph should take a similar shape that it did before if we had a certain order of reaction for the, sorry, an order for the crystal violet. The order, crystal violet, sorry, the order for malachite green should not change just because we're using a different um, concentration of hydroxide. So we'll collect data again for about three, maybe four minutes. We'll see how it goes. And then we'll take a look at the graph. Be sure you're recording this in a separate table. You'll be taking these absorbance values and again converting those. Now I'm noticing my iPad is not displaying the, the data. So let me try to make a reconnection here. Sorry. I'm going to just restart my, my LabQuest app. So give me just a moment. The, nothing's wrong with our experiment. It's just my iPad. So I'm going to... Oh, there we go. So now the data is displaying properly. All right, so you're going to be making, taking these absorbances and converting them to concentration values and creating a second series of graphs. You'll be looking at the integrated rate law analysis, so you'll be making graphs of concentration versus time, 
the natural log of concentration versus time, and the reciprocal of concentration versus time, those concentrations are all concentrations of malachite green. You'll then be able to determine the order for malachite green, whether it's zero order, first order, or second order in this reaction. The slope of the straight line graph in that, in, of those three graphs, normally that gives you your rate constant. But in this experiment, it gives us that pseudo rate constant that we talked about at the beginning of the video. So you're going to actually have two different slopes, because we have two different trials, two different pseudo rate constants. You also have two different concentrations of hydroxide. So you're going to set up two equations involving the pseudo rate constants and hydroxides, and you'll then be able to determine the order for hydroxide and ultimately the rate constant for the reaction, not its pseudo rate constant. So when you're done completely, you'll have the entire rate law for this reaction. You'll know the order for malachite green based on the graphs that you make. You'll know the order for the hydroxide after you've done some algebraic manipulations. And you'll know the, the rate constant for the reaction at room temperature. Now, how are we doing here? Again, we'd like to get through at least two half-lives, at least 75% of the reaction. So 0.45 is what our initial absorbance was. So 0.23 would be one half-life and 0.115. So we, we should let it go for another, well, probably until the three minutes is completed. Since we're using a lower concentration of hydroxide, does it make sense to you that the reaction's rate is a little bit slower than it was before? So we set this to go for 300 seconds. Right now, that's been four minutes. We're almost at two half-lives. The absorbance has fallen by half and almost by half again, so that would be two half-lives. We're almost there. So there's 270 seconds. We'll just do the last reading. We set it for 300 seconds, so we'll just go for the full five minutes on this second trial. All right, so there's our last absorbance value, 0 0.103. Again, you can convert all those absorbances to concentrations using your equation from the Beer's Law plot. If we look at the graph for this second trial, it's a similar shaped graph that we had in the first trial, which makes sense. And you're going to be analyzing these graphs to determine uh, the order for malachite green. So good luck. Um, enjoy the calculations. Maybe your teacher can help you with some of those calculations as well.